In this video, we're going to be using Autodesk Inventor to create ourselves a shaft support. Now, I haven't seen a shaft support before in real life, but this is apparently what one looks like. So I'll just do a quick fly around and have a look at what the shaft support looks like. Okay, hopefully you've got a bit of an idea of how this shape looks. Alright, I'll just pop over and show you the orthographic view and the isometric drawing of it as well. So you can see the isometric drawing is the 3D view of our shape. And then over here we've got our orthographic view which has all of our dimensions. Now if you're in my class you will get a printout, hopefully, with all the dimensions on it. If you're not in my class then take note of the dimensions so you can actually draw this shape yourself. So there's the side view and the front view. I know those dimensions are a bit small so hopefully you can see them okay. And up the top we've got our top view. So zoom in a little bit there and you can get an idea of our top view dimensions. Alright, so that is a shaft support and that's what we're creating today. So to get started, we're going to be drawing this 2D view down here. Basically, we're going to get this section drawn first. We're going to extrude it into a 3D shape and then we'll draw this circular part here. And then we'll also cut a hole in the front of our shape like this bit here. Alright, so let's get started today by going up to our File menu and selecting New. If you don't have a File menu, remember, hit the orange I in the top left hand corner and you should get the same options. When you click New, you want to click on the Metric Templates and choose yourself a standard millimeter inventor part. And we're going to click Create. From here we're going to start a 2D sketch. When you click Start 2D Sketch, you'll see three orange work planes appear on your page. You want to be clicking on the XY plane. With the XY plane selected, you can now start drawing your first 2D view of your shape. Okay, now what we need to do here before we start drawing is just move this origin down to the bottom left corner. And we do that by holding down the mouse wheel and moving our mouse. So hold down your mouse wheel, drag to the left just to move that origin where the X and Y axis meet out of the way. That way we've got this space up here to start drawing our shape. Now to start drawing our um, shaft support today I'm going to be using the line tool and I'm going to start right in the origin so where that X and Y axis meet. I'm going to click once, move my mouse cursor around and you can see that a line follows my mouse cursor. It's just looking for the next point in this shape or where you want this first line to end. We've got a start point, we now want an end point. So the end point is going to be directly up, it's going to be 80 mils up, and make sure you're going up 90 degrees exactly. And you can click your mouse or press enter. And you'll see that you've got a line, you might have to zoom out a little bit here to see all of this, you've got a line running straight up the y-axis. The next line we want to draw in goes straight across to the right at 90 degrees, it's going to be 10 millimeters. In fact, all the lines I draw in this first section are going to be 90 degree angles. Okay, so I won't keep telling you the angles, I'll just keep telling you the size of the lines. So this time I'm going to go down and it's going to be a distance of 70 millimeters. Then we're going to go across to the right a distance of 20. We're going to go up 24 mil. We're going to go to the right 8 millimeters. We're going to come back down. 24 mil. We're going to go across to the right at 50 mil. We're going to go down 10 mil. And then we're going to move straight back to the starting point. You'll see your mouse cursor turn will have a little green circle under it when you're back on the start point and you want to connect those lines. So just click your mouse and you should have your first enclosed 2D shape. What we're going to do now is extrude it by finishing that sketch off might need to zoom out and just hold your mouse wheel down just to move it back into the center of the page. And we're going to extrude this shape now to make it 3D. So in your 3D model tab at the top, click Extrude. Your shape will probably automatically select. And the distance you want to extrude your shape is 50 millimeters. Click OK once you've done that and you can see we've got a good chunk of the shaft support already drawn. So that's looking good. Next thing you want to do is put a hole in the center of this front section here. 
Okay, so to do that we need to draw a circle, and we basically just need to extrude it to cut it out. So let's start a new 2D sketch first of all, and we're going to click on this front face of our shape just here. That will just flip your shape around, we're back in the 2D view here, and what we're going to do before we draw the circle is we're going to project the geometry. So the lines that we drew earlier in our first sketch, we're going to project it onto this second sketch. So we click the Project Geometry button at the top, and just click on this square. And you'll see when you move your mouse away, or press Escape, that these yellow lines appear. Okay, they're just guides, they're going to help us out with drawing our next sketch. Alright, they will disappear later on. So let's grab our Circle tool now from our ribbon at the top. And what we want to do is draw smack bang in the centre of this square. We're going to use some guides to help us out. If you hover your mouse around the centre of this square, you might see some dashed lines appear. There's one there, coming out of the bottom. So that means I'm vertically in the centre of the shape. If I keep moving towards the centre, you'll see another line appear. That one's coming out from the right. So I've got two dashed lines now showing me that I'm vertically centred and horizontally centred. So I can now click and start drawing a circle out from the centre of this shape. Now this circle needs to have a diameter of 30 mil, so type in 30 and press enter. Okay, and that's the only sketch we need to do on um, this view, so we'll just finish the sketch at the top. Then what we can do now is use the extrude button to cut a hole that is going straight through the front of our shaft support. So click extrude up the top in your ribbon, select this circle, so just click inside it. Now at the moment the extrude thinks you want to build up, Okay, we actually want to cut through it. So, instead of doing this join option, we just go down below and choose the cut option. And that cuts straight through our shape. The distance you want to cut is just through all, which means it cuts through everything below it. And see that's going to be cutting straight through our shaft support. So click OK and you'll now have a hole at the front of your shaft support. The next thing you want to do is just round off these front two edges. Okay, and the way we round off edges in Inventor is using the Fillet tool. So look up the top in your ribbon and find yourself the Fillet tool, and click on it. With the Fillet tool selected, we want to change the radius here to 25mm. Once you've changed the radius to 25mm, come and click on this blue writing that says 0 selected. It's talking about the edges. Once you click on 0 selected, you can then go towards the front of your shape and click on this front edge here highlight white for you, and you can see it rounds off that front edge. Now we need to do the other front edge as well, so hold shift on your keyboard and hold your mouse wheel down, and just drag your mouse slowly while you're holding those two buttons down, and I want you to click on this front edge here as well. So we've now got two 25mm fillets at the front of our shaft support. Click OK once you're done there, and you can see now we've rounded off the front of our shaft support. That's the front section looking really nice, so we're nearly done here now. Last thing we want to do, if I just zoom out a bit here, is we want to add a little um, bit that sticks out just up here. It's just some circles that stick out from the back of the shaft support. Alrighty, so what we're going to be doing is making one more 2D sketch, so click on the Start 2D Sketch, and we're going to click on this face right here. Okay, now we're going to project some geometry again to use some guiding lines, so click on Project Geometry, and just click on this rectangle here, or this front face. Press Escape to turn that tool off, and you'll see you get some yellow lines appear, which are just some guides from our previous sketches. Now what we want to do is draw a circle almost in the middle here. Okay, it doesn't matter where exactly just yet. Okay, now the first circle that we draw is going to be 24 mil in diameter. Okay, and the second one's going to be 36 mil in diameter. But we're just going to draw the 24 mil circle first of all. Now what we want to do is we're going to get it vertically in the center. So move your mouse around towards the center, and you should see a dashed line appear running vertically. Okay, that shows you're in the center of this rectangle, so just click once, drag out, type in 24 and press enter. Now if you just go back and have a quick look at our isometric view here, you can see that this circle just here, which is what we're drawing right now, 
is 24 millimeters, or the center of the circle is 24 millimeters from the top of our shaft support. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dimension tool here to move this center point of the circle down 24 millimeters from the top of my shape. So I'm going to click with the dimension tool selected, I'm going to click the top of this shape and then the center point of my circle. I'm going to come out to the right, click my mouse, and type in 24 and just press enter and that makes your circle exactly 24 millimeters from the top of your shaft support that's exactly where we want it and with that in place we can add the second circle in quite easily now so just go and grab your circle tool again from your tool uh, from your ribbon at the top click right on that center point when your mouse hovers green drag out and I want you to type in 36 mil for the diameter and press enter. You've now got two circles. All we need to do now is extrude this section of the circle and we're pretty much done. Alrighty, so let's finish that sketch. You can see our circle there. If we just have a look at the isometric view again, this circle needs to be extruded 15 millimeters. So click the extrude option and I just want you to click inside those two rings or the two circles you can see that we're getting an extrusion going on now. The distance is a bit far at the minute. It's going 50, so I want to change that to 15. That's a better size. I'll click OK, and you can now see that our shaft support is all done. To finalize my shaft support, though, I am going to go up to my Appearance Browser, which is this first color wheel, and click that. I'm going to search for steel, so I want to put a steel kind of look or material over the top of this. When I search for steel, I got these different types of steel. Doesn't matter which one you choose, I might just go with the polished steel. So I'll click and drag over my shape to select it. Hover over the top of polished steel here and just hit the little blue up arrow that appears on top of it. And that just pushes that fabric or that material out onto my shape. I'll close the appearance browser now. And you can go for a fly around and you can see that you've got a finished shaft support with a nice glow to it. Alrighty, so I'm going to save that, make sure it goes into your graphics folder somewhere and you want to call it shaft support and leave that open, I'm just going to close off my examples for a second here. Okay, you should have your shaft support still open. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create the orthographic and the isometric drawings of this shape, or this object, sorry. Alright, so to do that we're going to go up to our File and New button again. And this time, we're still going to choose a metric template. But we're not going to create a part. We're not going to create an assembly. We're going to scroll down this list. And we're going to create a drawing. So look for your drawing um, panel. And you want to look for this one here that says ANSI millimeter.idw. It's basically standing for Inventor Drawing. Once you've got that selected, click Create and we can start our orthographic drawing um, for our shaft support. So we're going to click on the Place Views tab at the top and in the ribbon we're going to select Base. And you can see this brings out the base view or basically the side view of our shaft support. It's pretty small at the moment so I might just change its scale here to double the size, so 2 to 1. And I'm going to just grab the green border of it here and just move it to the left a bit as well. Now, with it still selected, I'm going to go up, and you can see if you click above the shape, you get the top view, and if you come out to the right, you'll get this front view of the shape. I also want you to come up to the top right and click your mouse, okay, and you'll get the isometric view of this shape. Um, click OK once you've done all that, and you'll see that they quickly change into just outlines of the shape. We will be changing how these look in just a moment. First thing I want to do is just name each of these shapes. So down in the bottom left, we'll start with the first one here. If you hover over it, you'll see a dotted red border appear. Double click on that dotted red border, and a little dialog box appears. In the dialog box, change the label there to say, in capital letters, Side View. Because this is the side view of our shaft support. Click the little... Um, light bulb there, turn it on, that will make sure the label appears underneath the shape in a moment. And hit the little pencil here 
just to edit that, I want you to delete the word scale and just highlight the word view and change this drop down box to 6.1 mil, which just changes the size of the text to be a bit bigger. Click OK. Click OK, and you've now got the side view text written in. You can pick that text up and just move it down a little bit. Do the same for this shape over here. Okay, double click on the dotted red border. Change the label name to front view. This is if we're looking front on at the shape. Just hit the little light bulb to toggle the visibility of that label and hit the pencil. Delete the word scale. Highlight the word view. And change its size to 6.1 mil. Click OK. Click OK. Again, just pick it up and move that text down a little bit. For this view up here, we've got the top view, so double click on the red border, change the label to top view, toggle the visibility on in the pencil view there where you can edit the text, delete scale, highlight the word view and make it size 6.1. Click OK a couple of times and you've now labeled each of those drawings, which looks good. We'll just label this isometric view now. If we just zoom out a bit, we might be able to make this view a little bit bigger. So double click on the red border, just try and scale it up to 3 to 1, see if it's going to fit. Might go a little bit out the line, so you might need to pick up the shape and just move it in. Yeah, that'll fit alright. The label for this one is isometric view. Turn the visibility on, hit the pencil. Now we're going to leave the scale here this time. Okay, and we're going to highlight all of the text and make it 6.1 mil. Click OK. The other thing I want you to click is this little shaded box here, so the ball and the little cube, that just makes it coloured in basically. When you click OK, see it stays coloured in now, and we've got the little label below it that says isometric view with the scale 3 to 1, meaning it's three times its usual size. Alrighty, the last thing we need to do, actually the second last thing we need to do is dimension these shapes, which means we want to see the measurements. So if somebody was to pick up this drawing and look at it, Okay, we want to give them the measurements so they know exactly how to draw this shape. Alright, so let's start with the side view. It's quite simple, we don't need to add too much to this. From your Annotate tab at the top, grab your Dimension tool. The first thing I want you to dimension, the width, or the, sorry, the length of this little circle that sticks out. So just click on this line here. Don't click on the centre when you see that little green um, circle, so it won't work. Just click next to it and just drag up and you should get a 15 that you can click and click. Just click OK. The next thing you want to do is just show the distance that the middle of this circle is from the top of the shape. OK, so I'm going to click the top line here. I'm going to come down and find the center point just there. So that green circle, I am going to click it this time. OK, and just drag up and wait to the left, sorry, and you'll get 24 mil. That's how it should be looking. The other thing we want to do, these dashed lines here just represent the circle that's cut, in, cut out from the base of the shape here. I want to get its distance from here into the middle there. So I'll dimension this line and then look for the center point which is just there. You see the little green dot appear, so press the green dot, click and drag up, and then click OK. That's all we really need dimensioned on the side view. For the front view, it's a fairly easy one too. We've still got our dimension tool selected. I'm going to dimension this circle. Okay, so just click anywhere on the border of that circle. It's going to come out this side and click and click. Then I'll do the bigger circle, same deal. Click, bring it out to the side and click. So you can see the diameter of those circles. 36 for the bigger one, 24 for the smaller one. Next thing I'm going to do is just work out the sizes down the side here. So I'll do this line. Whoops. I might have to actually click on this top line. And then this line here and show that that's a 46 mil distance. And I've got this line here, which is going to be about 24. And then this little line here, click, drag out, click, OK. Okay, while we're at it, we might do this top line as well, which is 50 mil. Click OK. So that's our front view all dimensioned. Okay, 
The last thing we'll do is the top view, which is just up here. Now we haven't got too much to do on the top view. Let's start with these rounded bits. So we want to know that this fillet here, its radius was 25 mil. So it should say R25, which stands for radius. Okay, so that just shows you the 25 millimeter fillet. Circle size, click on the border and drag out. That's a 30 mil diameter. Click OK. We'll just do a few dimensions across the top here. Um, that little line is 10. Next little line is going to be 20. And then this little line here should be 8. Okay, now that's coming out the wrong side there. Might be able to just pick this 8 up and move it over the other side. That's better. Alrighty, so I think that's everything dimension that we need to. If somebody was to look at this drawing now, they should have enough dimensions there to get the whole thing drawn. Um, I don't think I've forgotten anything. So just this height here, we might put this height in. don't think that was mentioned, no, so I'll put that in. So using my dimension tool, I'll put in the height of this, which is 24. And that's about all. Oh, actually, there it is there, 24, so I didn't need to put that in. I'll just undo that. You don't need to put the same dimension in twice. Okay, It's just an overkill and it becomes confusing. That's looking good. The last thing that we need to do now is just look down in this bottom right corner and put the title of our shape in, so just the name of the shape. So in our Annotate tab, grab your text tool here, click in the title section and capital letters. We'll just write shaft support. Don't forget to highlight it. Change its drop-down box size to 6.1 mil. Click OK. Press Escape to turn the text tool off, and you can pick that text up and just shove it up a little bit underneath the title. All right, so that, if I zoom out, should be it. Orthographic view, the 2D view done. Our isometric 3D view is done. We're looking good. Save that up. Make sure you've saved your shaft support, your actual 3D model as well. And you're all finished. I'll see you in the next video.